is miserable. Well, you're working from home today. <laughs> Good morning. How are you? How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm pretty well. Good. It's pretty flipping cold out, people. Yes. My gosh. Yes, it is. This is not messing around weather. 19 below zero. We heard the wind chill this morning up in Rozo, up up there in Rozo, is Ooh, you know. uh, 45 below zero. Whoa. Ooh. Holy cow. Yeah, not good. Not good at all. So, stay inside today if you at all possibly can. Uh, and little warning to you, Dr. Mary, perhaps you should bring some gloves. You don't have to wear them, but you should just have them. Yes, dear. Thank you. All right, happy weekend. Hope you had a good weekend. I heard there was a game on yesterday. Yeah, Arsenal lost. <laughs> Spurs won. Wow, that was a really good setup, <laughs> unintentional. <laughs> Um, Something no, we, happened with American yeah, football. Yeah, we talked apparently. to our nephew yesterday at halftime. Uh, the Buccaneers were winning. I am assuming they. Well, in fact, I know they won because I Some know Tom old guy Brady got won. won. Tom Brady. Yeah. Look at that. Look at us being all sportsy. I was going to say Wayne Brady, but that's a comedian. It is. It's very topical of us. Um, oh, mother wants to know where your mitten string is. This is a new <laughs> pair of mittens. <laughs> One year, my mom gave Maz for Christmas. She had found him a pair of gloves and she'd sewn one of those mitten strings, you know, that you used to wear. So your gloves just hung on the end of your coat and you could never lose them. Yes, um, I had to do that when I was a kid because I kept losing my gloves. Yeah. Ooh, Anne wants to know about QPR. Anne, you'll find this interesting. QPR is the only actual live team. I don't know who they played, but I've seen them play in England twice. I, we like QPR. Yeah, my, my, my brother-in-law is a QPR fan. And he is, so, so is my godson. so are we. Um, but not like Arsenal and Spurs. I don't, I don't, know, if, I don't know how they did, actually. I was just checking the Norwich score in the championship. I didn't look for QPR. So many so, things to sorry consider. Then. Disappointing. Okay, today we're going back to Seth Godin because he often just... Oh, I feel like he says stuff that I wish I had said. So this is from um, February 4th. A simple missing word, mm. yet. You can append it after any sentence related to your journey of achievement or contribution. I haven't finished the project. I haven't learned how to juggle. I haven't made the sale, yet. And along the way, yet turns can't into haven't. Yet isn't the result of brazen persistence. It's what we earn with learning, insight, and generosity. So I just think that's really lovely because how often do we stop ourselves by saying, oh yeah, I haven't done that. I can't do that. I won't do that. Not doing that. Yet. It takes it from definitive and failure into something hopeful. It does. It, it's, a great, it's a great transition into pointing out a success. Like if even some says, someone says to you, you haven't raised your sales figures by 40%, and you can say, yet, yet <laughs> they thought they're up 28%. You know, why start to the negative, start to the positive? <gasps> Dr. Mary. It's true. I uh, know, but it's so shocking I, from an Irish Catholic. It's one of these things I learned in rehab. So <laughs> the right well, thing. say more. I mean, You know, have, have, have you, you know, have you done your, you know, not yet is not an excuse. It could, it, no, I haven't isn't an excuse, but is an excuse. I learned that one too. Oh, comma, but. Comma, but. I don't think I've actually said but in a sentence in the last four years, I don't think. Not much. Um, you know, have you done this yet? Have you done this? Not yet. Doesn't mean, and, and I'm, I'm a, going to. I'm going to. It's on my list. And you don't, as long as you don't mean to fob someone off by saying, oh, it's on my list, get around and do your list. So I want to um, share I would with think you. About, sorry, think about this uh, uh, turning a negative into a positive from a, a, 
a line from a movie. You know, um, you're the worst pirate I've ever heard of. I've ever <gasps> heard of. Yes. But you have, have heard, heard of, of me from <laughs> Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> that is an amazing, amazing yes, line. Yes, and you have heard of me, yeah. Um, this reminds me. So <clears throat> uh, I, I had two meetings with Maz and one with Maz and his group and his therapist and one with Maz and his therapist while he was living at Prairie St. John's in active rehab. And he had not yet transitioned from being someone who took no responsibility for where he was at to taking the responsibility he needed to take for where he was at in his life. So I have this scheduled appointment with Maz and Joanne, his therapist, his counselor, and he knows about it. And so I get there and then she sends for him and he walks in and uh, she says to him, did you bring your homework? And he says, no, I haven't done it. And she said, why not? And he laid out 40 excuses. Well, I had to mop, I had to do this. He had all these chores and things that you have to do when you live in rehab. And I'm just sitting and I'm observing all of this. And she is treating him like a naughty four-year-old. It actually was really hard to watch. It was embarrassing to see an adult be humiliated the way that she was humiliating him. Uh, and so he has all these excuses why he's not done these homework assignments. And one of them is about our marriage and our relationships. And um, at the end of all of his excuses, she says to him, you can go. You've not done your work. You're not taking it seriously. You're free. You're excused. That's what she said to him. You are excused. Yeah. And he got up and left. And I looked back at her. And that is when she told me she thought he had narcissistic personality disorder. Which I don't. And he way. doesn't. <laughs> and that he was never, ever going to be a sober person. And that this was a hopeless case because he was not willing to take any accountability for his actions. And then she basically excused me. And I walked out of that room and Maz was sitting in the waiting area and I was on my way to the car and he said to me, can we talk? And so we went back to the mm. desk to find out if he could come sit in the car with me because I didn't know what the rules were. And kind of amazingly, they said yes. I mean, wouldn't that be a great place for me to bring him alcohol if that were my intention? But whatever, they said yes. So this is probably two and a half weeks into rehab. So he's been gone at this point for a month. And I have, I have not been angelic to him through all of this, but I've been pretty supportive, pretty kind, pretty patient. Do you agree? I don't want to say things that aren't true. You no, maybe don't no, even really remember. No, I do. That sounds about right. Okay. So we get in the car. I'm in the driver's seat. He's in the passenger seat. And he starts to say something. I have no idea what. It was probably 100% bullshit. Probably. probably it was, yeah. And I, obviously not literally, but I figuratively pulled this mask of placid, supportive Dana DelVal right off my face. And I unleashed the most furious verbal assault I have ever unleashed on any human being, anybody. And I've been mad at other people plenty of times. Um, and you took it. You, you said nothing. You sat there, you took it, I finished, and you said, I think I should go inside. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure I said, I think you better go. I think you better head. And out you went. And the next day I got a call from you and Joanne that you had done all your homework, that you had turned a corner. And I'm not taking credit for the corner. I'm saying that was Maz's yet moment. Yeah, it was, you was, know what? That was my yet. Interestingly, it was mine too. I had to do that. I had to go from, I haven't been mad at him. I haven't been frustrated. I haven't shared how I feel yet. And as soon as I unleashed that, I've told you that that journal gave me the opportunity to, to say everything I needed to say. I had to have a yet mm. moment with you. And I did. And you did the best 
thing you could have done. I listened. You listened. You, and I'm not even saying to you, you listened and changed. I'm saying you just listened. You allowed me to express that moment, to have my yet and go. And we both, that, that was such an integral moment to our journey back. It was that moment, actually, I think at that time in, in, in rehab, I'd, I'd actually worked out there was actually something wrong with me, but I still thought I could fix myself. Yeah. And I thought that was the day I think I realized that I couldn't, but I wanted to be fixed. Yeah. So that was my yet moment. I'm not fixed yet. What do I have to do? And yeah. that was obviously all those assignments I uncharacteristically didn't do, uh, you know, considering what I do for a living and somebody, <laughs> I must have learned all these comments. <laughs> I'd, uh, I'd, I'd put them at the back of my mind for years and I must have just- Pulled out every student excuse you could come up with. Thought yep. this would be a, this would be a good idea to try and do this. Well, you know what? I have two things to say to it. One, I came back for a second meeting. Joanne gave us a second opportunity to meet and you had done all this writing, which was surprising for you because you're not a writer. No. Um, and that's when I, that might have been my first inkling into the depth of who you are because you are, you are not a deep dive external person. I, I'm not saying you don't think things deeply, but you don't express them very deeply. And you expressed some really profound stuff in that moment. And the second thing is, Joanne gave me all this paperwork on narcissistic personality disorder. And so I'm home and I'm reading it and I have this horrific inkling in the back of my head. The whole time I'm thinking, well, this is nothing about this is mass, but a ton of it is me. <laughs> I mean, like, check, 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 <laughs> check. So I called Quinn and I said, Quinn. I want to know who you think this sounds like. And I read him all this stuff. And I, I say it with no intonation of any hint of anything. I read it, read it, read it. And he listens to it and he goes, boy, it sounds a lot like you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Quinn was at this time safe in South Dakota. Let's, let's... I, no, I, I really wanted to know because, I mean, I felt like even asking someone else if I was narcissistic was a tendency of a narcissistic person. So that was a good learning point for me. But you, I'm not sure where she was coming from with that, but you never, that is not a you thing to struggle oh, I with. I think, I think. I'd, it's, it's a real thing. It could have been an thing. attempt to get me to have my yet. Maybe, there might, there might have been. narcissistic yet, maybe. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. Um, but I think there is something really powerful about tacking on a yet, but it has to be a yet that matters to you, it can't be a throwaway. Um, I, I haven't started my diet yet because your doctor has told you to lose weight and so you think if you say that to the doctor, the doctor buys it and moves along. It's no different really than when you used to say to me when you were drinking, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on that. Because when he first started saying that to me, it always worked, I believed him because he's a hard worker. I and actually, then it became at the start a of all throwaway. That, I think I tried. Failed. You probably did. Clearly failed miserably. Well, I, I'm not saying you never tried. I'm just saying that we have all these catchphrases of things that we think other people believe because we've said them. At some point, I stopped believing when you said, yeah, I'm going to work on that because you weren't. If you are using yet as a band-aid to try to cover up the fact that your chest has been cracked open, yeah, that's not going to work for you. The band-aid isn't going to save it. Mm. The plaster for you, Dr. May. Yeah, I got that. <laughs> Anything else? Do you want to hear it one more time? Yet. You can append it after any sentence related to your journey of achievement and contribution. Notice he doesn't say any sentence, period. I haven't finished the project. I haven't learned how to juggle. I haven't made the sale. Yet. And along the way, yet turns into can't turns can't into haven't. Yeah. I can't do that. I haven't done it. Totally different. Totally different. Yet isn't the result of brazen persistence. It's what we earn with learning, insight, and generosity. Yeah.
I loved this, and you loved it. I did, when because it, the yet is, I haven't done it yet, full stop. I haven't done it. But I might, but I'm, or I'm, I'm going to try, or, or I'm I intending haven't done it, to. But it's not, I haven't done it, and I'm scared to. It's, yeah. I haven't done it yet. Yep, like, I'm not going to say to anybody, I haven't jumped out of a plane yet. I don't intend to jump out of a plane. That's not the place to use yet. Um, I am going to be an internationally known public speaker. That is going to happen. It hasn't happened yet, but it's going to happen. So there's that. All right, stay warm, stay warm, stay, stay warm. Stay very warm. Cover your fingers and your toes and your nose and everything else. Stay inside if you can. Have an excellent day and we'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye. Have a good one.